Cape. Uh, bright sunny morning getting started here. I think it's supposed to rain later, but for right now, really nice day. And uh, gonna go check out little girl. Really, really late when we got in last night. Didn't go to bed till about 12:30. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, kind of wanted to see how it looks over here because they had some really heavy-duty windstorms while I was gone. And want to see. Uh, now she's wrapped. So I'm going to shut up now and just do a walk around. My parents' bedroom is right back here, so i got to kind of be quiet. So let's do a walk around and see what it looks like. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Great. Okay, we're in good shape. The tarp held good and tight. I'll tell you what, this uh, there's water right here, but that's all right. This is no big deal. It's not frozen, and I'll be able to get the water out of that with no problem. All right, guys. I'm going to pull on this tarp and get the water out of there. And um, I don't know if I'll get up in there. I'm going to go check the weather see what we got coming today um, I got a number of projects I want to get done but but I've also got to get a sermon ready this time while I'm here which I've not had to do in the past so I may have to spend some of the day working on that so hey welcome back to uh, restoring little girl and uh, glad to be back down here well bad news guys here's the Bombay doors for the uh, outboard motor and I just measured the width across my outboard there's no way, Jose, this is going up through the bomb bay. What I've got to do is haul it up the ladder <laughs> and drop it down through. So, okay, <laughs> back to work. Well, good morning, guys. It's November 7th. We're back down on the Cape <coughs> for a couple days. Uh, as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, uh, hang on, let me turn this around. As I mentioned in the earlier part of the video, um, uh, down here, oh, this is Thursday. We've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning. We've got to leave, so it's one of those, one of those really kind of quick turnaround times. But I got some stuff I want to get done. Um, I cut that piece for the uh, companionway hatch cover. Uh, up in Vermont. I want to try to get that on this morning. I brought some clamps with me. Um, I, I also want to uh, take off the Windex uh, off from the mask because that kind of got kind of mangled at some point. Um, oh, I know what it was. It was when that tree limb came down on the boat uh, on, the, on the on the mast a few years ago. Or I guess a year ago, whatever. Um, and it got kind of took a nosedive into the into the leaves and the brush and kind of twisted it. Now, there's nothing missing on it, so I'm just going to take it right off the mast and take it home and get it straightened out, and we'll put it back when I get it, uh, get the chance to do all the work on the mast, which is coming. We, uh, that's that's one of the projects we've got coming up. So anyway, uh, uh, oh, I think that's about it for now. Uh, I'm going to get going on that uh, that piece of trim that I cut. Uh, this is the first time I've used Sapili mahogany. Much more expensive stuff than the Maranti. Um, but uh, they quit. They quit carrying the Maranti. I was a little upset about that. I mean, I like Maranti. It's it's uh, a little bit softer mahogany, nicer to work with. But boy, I mean, so supposedly Sapili mahogany is supposed to be really, really good stuff. So it'll look good, and it'll look good with the other stuff that I've got around the companionway. So, all right, guys, gonna get to work. Uh, gonna get that stuff up here. My mom and dad let me uh, back my car up in front of the boat, so gonna be an easy unload here. And the main thing, I got my motor with me. Um, it's going back to Vermont, <laughs> but I do have my motor with me, and I'm really chopping at the bit to uh, uh, to see how it sits in there, uh, how it's gonna how it's gonna uh, clamp down, all that kind of good stuff. Gonna be brand new stuff for me because I've never do, never used an outboard, except I guess my, my, maybe my dad made me mess with it one other time, but. Uh, all right, well, look, let's get going, and uh, welcome back aboard. Uh, glad to be back on Little Girl. 
Well, I'm down here to escape the ugliness of the uh, stinking leaf blower across the street, but you can still hear it. I hate the cussed thing. It's one of the things about coming down to Cape Cod. It's there everywhere. Leaf blowers and lawnmowers and oh my goodness. How come you never hear these up in Vermont? It's because we're so well apart and we got the woods all around us and ugh, whatever. So anyway, this is my lovely Windex. Um, you can see the kind of condition that it's in. And I just looked at what the pro cost would be if I bought a brand new one for $45. I don't think so. This is getting straightened out. My only concern is uh, everything can straighten out very nicely except for, for this right here. And I don't know if that's going to mess things up. That is definitely cracked right there. And I'm very hesitant to try to go bending it back up. I'm afraid it'll break right off. So um, we got to figure out something to do. Maybe just leave it like it is because I think it would still work just fine. Uh, but um, uh, the tails here, like counterbalance everything, uh, those, those I can straighten out. I'm going to get a picture of a Windex and see what they're supposed to look like. I can pretty much guess, but um, anyway, I'm going to try putting this all back together. Uh, so it's being one less thing I have to spend uh, to try to get the uh, little girl back up and running. I'm not happy. Uh, guys, I'm not happy. I mean, usually I'm pretty careful in the work I do, but uh, this is not a good, uh, a good outcome here. Um, yeah. I was worried about this being too big, and I was going to have to take it down a lot to, to refine the edges and stuff like that. And actually, it came out, came out uh, a little too small. Uh, with, the, with cutting the, the bevel on this, which I like the bevel. I've got no problem with the bevel coming off the top of the, uh, the companionway hatch here. I'm not a, that's not the problem. The problem is that with, with cutting the bevel, I should have taken the upper line, and then I would have probably had it. Uh, but by taking the lower line of those two, and you're going to see it in the other video, what you're going to see is uh, by taking the lower line, it, it lowered this enough to where uh, when you look underneath here, you got uh, right there. You can see how it's up a little bit. Well, my point is it's, it's just not, it's not where I want it. And I'm going to go cut another piece. And I think this is going to end it for this particular video. Uh, maybe I'll show you when I'm cutting the new one at home. I'll use this as a really bad template. Um, matter of fact, I may get out a piece of cardboard and trace, trace off to get the uh, accurate lines for what I really want. And then very faithfully put those on to the, the sapili that I have left in that board. Anyway, well, you know what? I don't have many uh, flops, as it were. Uh, I think this is one of them. So, all right, guys. Uh, so much for this. I'm going to put the handle back on, and uh, we're going to be done with this project. I'm moving on. Look what I found, guys. This is that piece I was going to. I already did cut for uh, mounting the traveler to, which now I don't need because the traveler is already mounted. Um, and uh, this is Moranti. Uh, which is the same stuff I got all the way around the companion way. And it's plenty long enough to go ahead and use uh, to uh, for a brand new uh, arch piece to go on the companion way hatch. I've already marked it, and I'm going to go get a saw. Unfortunately, I've got to use a hand saw because I don't have a skill saw here. But I'll, I'll cut that off, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut a, uh, do a brand new template with the wood itself. This time, I'm going big, so that I can get it the right length, the right... Well, the length wasn't the problem. It all has to do with how it matches into that arch right there. And um, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get... Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and move on with this, because uh, at least I've got the material to do it right down here at... Uh, on the cape and see if we can't do the new matchup aboard little girl. Okay, so after the Sapili fail, we're going to turn around and we've got a brand new piece of uh, Moranti cut, uh, which is the stuff that matches up with the already existing wood in the companion way. And we're going to go ahead and uh, do the tracing out and this time, uh, no mistakes! <laughs> no mistakes! 
All right, I'm going to trace this, uh, and I'm going to do nothing but an upper uh, level. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Where'd my pencil go? Hang on. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. And let me see if I can do this. Okay, here's the back side. Uh, there's the arch of the companionway hatch. And what we did last time, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay the pencil down flat and just trace like this. And if I had done this and gone with this line the first time around, I wouldn't have to be cutting a new piece. Uh, because uh, I would have had plenty to go ahead and and uh, make whatever modifications I needed. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do this time. I'll do a second line down here. This is what I did last time. I'm laying it flat like that. You can see how I've got it. And then come along with a second line. You can see how that comes out. But when I did that, it ended up shorting me so that by the time I got done with the bevel, I was too close and I just, uh, it was just, it was just too close. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to do nothing but this line. Take it. Uh, that one, that way when I cut the bottom line, I, I should be good. Um, and if I have to take off some, I'll take off some. But at least uh, I won't come up and end up being too, uh, too little wood between the top and the bottom of, uh, of this arch that I'm having to do. So here's a new uh, pattern already traced on. Um, this time on to, uh, yeah, not Sapili. This time trace on to uh, Moranti instead of Sapili. And uh, we're going to try this when we get home, and we're going to try to do it right this time on that bandsaw. Oh, well, <laughs> wish me luck with this. Um, I'd rather not have to uh, ruin another piece. I probably have enough Sapili out of that first piece of lumber uh, to do a second one of these. Uh, but I'd rather go ahead and just uh, get this Moranti to cut right the first time. And then I don't have to uh, come back and do this all over again like I'm just having to do now. Just a quick update to get the day started here. Um, i got to be working on sermon a lot of the day because i just got one day left. I guess this is Friday. Uh, my brother is coming over this morning. And we're going to see about whether or not we're going to try to get this uh, uh, outboard up into the boat. Whole different ball game. Uh, trying to get it up a ladder or whatever, so um, we'll see. Anyway, in the meantime, <clears throat> the other thing I did yesterday, went out and bought a uh, another uh, multimeter uh, so I can work on the mass. I've got one up in Vermont. I left my electrical kit up there. <clears throat> so uh, I went out and bought another one. And uh, I do want to check out, uh, I want to ring out... Uh, the lines from the top of the mast down to the bottom and uh, see what we've got there. I'm pretty sure I know what what wires go where um, and I don't know if we're going to get to the wiring harness on the deck this time or not but uh, ultimately that's my my goal. I really really want to get these things checked out. Um, uh, I, I started the whole process yesterday by taking off my Windex uh, which is I'm going to take home and try to get it all straightened out. Uh, but I was working up there at the top of the mast and got to looking at the wiring coming up to the uh, up to the anchor light. So, all right, guys. Uh, I think with that I'm going to go in and grab some breakfast, and I'll be back out here a little bit later. If uh, my brother is able to help me out getting the motor up in here, uh, we'll get that done. If not, then uh, you know um, I'll ring out the mast a little bit later. But uh, I don't have any choice. Uh, today I've got to get some work done on my sermon for Sunday or uh, I'm going to be a deep doo-doo. I can't stand up there on Sunday morning and say nothing. I've got to, got to get this thing worked out. So, All right. God bless. Have a, have a great day. And uh, thanks for stopping by Restoring Little Girl. And uh, we'll kind of just go from there. And oh my goodness, it is spitting snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is unbelievable. Okay, well. Welcome to Cape Cod. <laughs> we got some up in Vermont over the, overnight, I know, but uh, I was not expecting to see any down here this morning. Anyway, <laughs> all right, breakfast time. Catch you guys later. All right, guys. Well, here's the uh, here's the scoop. I'm um, gonna turn this around. My brother and I just had the uh, outboard up here on the boat and tried to get it in. Um, as of right now, it's not going in. Um, we're gonna have to make some modifications. Uh, but uh, let me let me just uh, kind of explain it to you, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. 
Okay, so we had it up here and we set it down. I had to take this right out because it, it wouldn't even accommodate with this and just getting it into place anyway. Uh, this right here, the, the engine mount, uh, is just too thick uh, for, the, for the bracket, the mounting brackets on, on my old outboard. And I'm looking at this, and I think what they did, and I think this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take those mounting bracket um, turn screws right off. And I think if I do that, it will go down onto here. Because that's about all it was lacking to be able to fit over it. I'm going to take the turn screws right off, and I think it will slide down. And from right, what I'm seeing right now, I think those screws right there were there deliberately for one reason only. Because they did the same thing with the Yamaha that was on here. And those scree screws turn outward to hit the back of the engine mount and hold everything in place. I'm betting that that is exactly what's going on. Uh, so anyway, uh, bad news for now. For, so for what I've done, I'm, I'm taking the, uh, the cowling home because I've got I've to work on the latch. I've got the, all the pieces for that at home. That'll get completely reconditioned. But for right now, what's going to happen, um, the engine is downstairs in the furnace room where it's going to be nice and warm and no problem. And then what I'm going to do, uh, once I take those, uh, um, take those turn screws off, I'm going to get my brother back over here and we're going to put mount that right back in there and I think we're going to be good to go. Uh, the next question is going to be, once it slides down on, uh, how is the, the uh, turn handle, what do you want to call it, the tiller uh, for the motor going to fit through here? And I think it'll do just fine. I think once, every, once the motor is down and the, the tiller is through this opening right here, I think we're going to be good, okay? Uh, and then once all that's in place, then we can go ahead and put this back in. For now, we had to take that, that uh, cutout piece that I just rebuilt. I uh, had to take it right off again for the moment, so... All right, well, a little bit of a setback for this trip, uh, but uh, the engine's staying here. I think I'm going to just go ahead. I've done all the reconditioning to the engine I'm going to do for now. Uh, eventually, I'll do the lower end, but, but for right now, everything's done. So, All right. <laughs> uh, one step forward, two steps back. All right, can you hear it? It's ringing. I don't know where the, where the speaker is. Anyway, it's working. <laughs> okay, so what this means is this wire right here is the uh, is the anchor light. There's no doubt about it. It's it's very faded. Uh, it's I think it's red inside the mast, uh, but, but it's it's faded with from sun. But then what I did I took this line, which I had extra line from when I ran the uh, wire back to, to my stern light. And I ran it all the way up to the top of the mast and uh, ran it into the wire, or twisted it into the wire that goes to the anchor light uh, from the old one that I took off from there. And sure enough, that is, that is the line that goes to the anchor light. So we know that. Uh, and as far as the anchor light is concerned, basically all it is up there is that they just have it grounded. Uh, the ground side just goes to the mast itself. Uh, has a little uh, loop that goes underneath underneath the uh, screw, one of the screws that holds the uh, anchor light on. Okay, then this, it gets to be another matter. I, I pulled this apart yesterday. There are three lines going to this, and it was stupid for me to take this off because there's nothing there. Everything comes out of this uh, little uh, little accordion tube thing that's... Uh, but I, I dare not pull on this. For, I'm afraid I'm going to break the line inside. But you notice there's three lines here. You've got a blue, black, and that was theoretically red to begin with. And down here, at the bottom of the mast, you've got a three-line setup. It's all inside this cable here. You've got black, green, um, and white. Okay? And it's interesting that they've got the black. Um, looks like they've... Yeah, these are two are tied together. So it's basically just down to two. Okay. So basically, I wonder if that means that this is your hot lead and this is your uh, your ground. 
anyway, this is all to be figured out. I'm going to get up on the on the uh, uh, top of the cabin right now and take a look at the uh, uh, take a look at how that's set up. Um, well, we're back up in Vermont. This is about a couple of weeks after this video that I'm just putting out that you're going to be watching here, uh, and this is kind of a finish up. Um, I never really did get to finish up because I was so busy trying to get that sermon done, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, suffice it to say, uh, this, it was not the greatest trip. Uh, I got out that, I got that one wire wrung out so that I know which one it happens to be the anchor light, etc. But, um, I, I just never had really time to develop all this. So anyway, but in the meantime, what I have done uh, I've gone online with uh, my fellow Seafarer website guys uh, that are all Seafarer owners like I am. And I pr propose this idea of what do I do about, um, about the, the motor mount? And uh, do I try to trim it down and be able to fit the motor that way? Do I, uh, uh, I, uh, do I take the, the, t the turn screws out? In other words, the clamps out. The whole point is I'm going to leave the clamps in. And this is what's recommended by a bunch of guys. I'm, I'm going to leave the clamps in uh, as part of the motor uh, bracket there. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and just relieve that motor mount enough to where that'll slide down on there and then tighten her down and we're good to go. Um, I may have to wait till I can buy the tool. I don't have a fine, what they call a fine saw, fine tool uh, right now. Um, kind of need one for doing that job, but I'm just going to not the greatest trip uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this out but uh, you know what we're gonna be doing uh, this week oh this thing is really shaking really um, so this week we're gonna be going down to the Cape again finally um, and we're gonna be going down to do Thanksgiving with my mom and dad I'm gonna preach down there on the first of December and um, that's great because it means I'm gonna spend a whole lot more time there I'm going to get a chance to do some of the work that I've been wanting to do and uh, maybe have a little bit better trip this next time around. So it won't be one step forward, two steps back. Hopefully we'll get a couple of steps forward. So anyway, in the meantime, guys, thanks for stopping by Restoring Little Girl. Um, I really appreciate all you guys that uh, come around and watch these videos and uh, uh, hang in there. Hang in there. I'm convinced, Lord willing, if the creek don't rise, we're going to get this old girl in the water by next summer. All right. God bless. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time around.